Chapter 2. Things that make you go, hmm. 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 Have you ever advocated for somebody else? An advocate is a person who stands up for the rights of others. Maybe you saw someone who wasn't being treated fairly and you spoke out to help them. If so, then you were being an advocate for them. We can use it as a verb, too. You advocated for them. Here's the point. Today, you'll learn about somebody who was an advocate for others. She stood up for the rights of those who really couldn't speak for themselves. That's why I like to think of this unit as the most special unit of the whole school year. Because we get to learn about real American heroes. Dorothea, Dorothea Dix, real American hero. First, you'll learn about who she was. She wanted reform, or change, for people with mental illness. Just like there are diseases or sicknesses that affect our bodies, there are also illnesses that affect the way a person's brain works. These types of illnesses are called mental illnesses. It all started when she began working in a jail. It was an experience that changed her life. She wasn't necessarily expecting to find people with mental illnesses there. She just was going to teach a Sunday school class. She found that there were people with mental illnesses sent to jail even though they had not committed any crime. Now remember the Constitution unit? What was the name given to the first ten amendments? Are you talking about the rights of Englishmen that later became the basis for the Bill of Rights? That's right, sideways man. Yes, the Bill of Rights. Some of those rights talk about fairness in trials to make sure that innocent people aren't put in prison. But that's exactly what had happened to many of the people Dorothea Dix met when she went to teach her Sunday school class. The truth was that at that time, lots of cities and town governments just wanted these people out of sight, and they were often treated very, very unfairly. Next, you'll learn about the steps she took to actually make reforms. Remember the question we began chapter one with? How do you go about making changes to an entire city or state or nation? It's a big task. She knew she had to take her concerns to the state legislature. That is, the legislative branch of the government. Why would she do that? Because that was the branch that had all the power. Not like the Articles of Confederation. It was so weak. It had no muscles. The legislative branch had the power. That's right. Because it's the legislative branch of government that has the power to actually change the laws. And she advocated for those with mental illnesses. Now remember, an advocate is a person who supports and defends and stands up for the rights of other people. And that's exactly what she did when she went to the state legislature. Now listen here, you bunch of do-nothings, sitting around like a bunch of lazy goats. I want some changes and I don't mean baby. You got a real problem. I mean a real problem with a capital P. Now get off your lazy cabooses and get going. Go on now. Get, get, get on, get. At the very end of the chapter, you'll see just how successful she was in seeing these changes or reforms take place. Time to review. Pause the video and read the chapter. Then come back and let's see what you've learned. This is a great way to prepare to do the independent work as part of this Google Classroom assignment. What surprised Dorothea Dix when she visited the jails? Remember, she originally wasn't going to help people with mental illnesses. She was going to teach a Sunday school class. But when she arrived, she was surprised to see that there were people with mental illnesses there, even though they had committed no crimes. How did people generally feel about those with mental illnesses during this time period? Well, most people just kind of wanted them out of sight, and if that meant putting them in jail, so be it. People with mental illnesses needed an blank 
like Dorothea Dix, somebody to stand up for their rights, an advocate, that's right. A hospital for people with mental illnesses is called an asylum. What's the part of state government responsible for making the laws? The legislature. Now, in the last unit, we learned about the national legislature, Congress, which has two parts, the Senate and the House of Representatives. They make laws that apply to the entire nation. But each state also has their own Congress or legislature that makes the laws for that particular state. And who did Dorothea Dix need on her side in order to actually make those changes or reforms for people with mental illnesses? Well, of course, she wanted everybody on her side, but she especially needed lawmakers. Lawmakers work in the legislature or the legislative branch of government. And their job is to make and change and update laws. She knew she had to get their support if she wanted to see real, lasting change. Ultimately, what did she want built for people with mental illnesses so they could get treatment? Special hospitals. And remember, we call those asylums. See you next time for another history hook.